Hi everyone, it's Dennis here at the School of Light and uh, I have here Gunnar Hielman? Hielman. Hielman, yeah. Hielman, all right. Now for those of you, I, I, I wanted, with this mate, I want to presume, I don't want to presume that people know who people are, right? So we're going to, there's a whole bunch of people in our community who know who you are for all of the reasons we're about to talk about. But for those of you who are new to the School of Light, this is a man who is old school, has been around for a long time. And the idea of these image breakdowns is not just to look at these images and sort of cut through them and learn the inspiration and what they are, but I want the people watching this to be able to listen to people that have been light painting for a long time. Uh, and like everyone I'm inviting, not only painting for a long time, but have a skill set that I genuinely believe will add to all of our work. And Gunnar, you are certainly that man. I um, yeah, that's my event. It's my pleasure. I can't believe we're here together. So a bit of background. Uh, Gunnar and I have met uh, a couple of times, once at Photokina in Germany a few years ago. But uh, more excitingly, uh, Gunnar and uh, Sven organized Light Up Berlin, which is an event I was very lucky to make it to last year. Um, because you know, obviously that wouldn't be happening this year. And Rob Turney and I flew up to Germany and mate, that was just a stunning experience, a beautiful event. And um, yeah, congr A, congratulations and B, uh, yeah. Thank I, you, thank I, you. Yeah, I'll make the effort to come next time. Now, when I make, uh, when I make notes on the people that we had, we're inviting to the School of Light, I always write down key words. And what I've written here, mate, and I think you'll enjoy this. <laughs> okay, tell me. You're a traveler, which yeah. is amazing because your work we get to see you in all sorts of different places and with different people. So you're a, a great collaborator. Um, you're an experimenter. And when people, when I, I'm going to point people to your work and they're going to see that you don't get stuck in one place. You, you're, you know, you, you experiment and you, you try and you're not afraid to try new things and no shit. I wrote here, you are German, right? And the reason I wrote you are German is because <laughs> I, I feel quite an affiliation with German light painters because, and what I mean by you are German is you are very precise. I was looking through your website and I was looking through your website today, mate. And, and I reckon you get it right. Most of the time, it, 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 you're a very precise light painter. And what that means is that, you know, it's quite, it's quite easy to look at your work and be inspired to be precise as well. Now, one more thing before we get into it. These image breakdowns are, are quite punchy, but I'm going to link to Gunnar's. Uh, am I saying that right, Gunnar? Will that yeah, do? You Gunnar? do. You do. Gunnar? It sounds pretty good. It's yeah, Gunnar. <laughs> yeah, no, no, um, I'm going to point everyone to your website because your website is it's a brilliant website. I think it's too easy to go, go and have a look at your social media. That's easy to find, but go and have a look at Gunnar's website. It is not only full of his beautiful imagery, but there is an amazing tutorial section. You make incredibly good tutorials, mate. Um, Thank you. Thank yeah, you. It, it's my pleasure. Your one on torches is, is, is beautiful. There's, you know, the image we're about to look at, which is pretty exciting. Uh, you know, you dive into to a tutorial on that anyway. So enough of my babbling on, I'm in, I have a question for you. So fiber optic portraits, mate, are very, well, I'm, first of all, I'm going to put up the image on the screen now so people can see it, right? So this is, this is what a fiber optic portrait is. And I have, I cre in the School of Light, I created a fiber optic portrait tutorial and it was the first time I'd ever done it. And I can tell you it is hard, right? Let's leave the image up on the screen, mate. And I talk to us a little bit. The first thing I want you to talk to us about is portraiture is something that you do a lot of. Talk to me a bit about the motivation and what you're thinking about when you're creating this image before we get into the technical stuff. Um, I think very often I stood there and I'm, I came from landscape photography and way back, I don't know, 20 years ago, there was this platform similar to Facebook. It would actually show you what, which would get more traffic. And, and then I'm hung up between what I like and then I see what people like. You would actually see what gets more traffic. And every time there was a person in the picture, it would get at least 
tenfold the traffic to a landscape. Um, and then I, I kept saying like, yeah, but, um, but I love my landscape. I kept doing it, whatever. Uh, but then in the time, then I uh, started being more interested in portrait photography. And here's the two worlds that you may or may not want to combine, but when you actually try, it helps. I started doing a little bit of portrait photography. And then there was my third world, which was light painting. And now I wanted to scramble all that up. And uh, the photo we're seeing is the first try to bring the world of light painting with a portrait together which I then later on you see in some of my work wanted to combine in the landscapes or in some kind of environment. So this is the way I started the motivation. I literally went through a lot of portraits before I did portrait light paintings uh, in order to get a little bit more the, the, the grasp of how posing and so on. Portraiture is a difficult form. Portraiture, portraiture, is, portraiture is because when I look at this image, and I, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more to this. It really, I feel this photograph, you know. I feel it. There, there is a, you have captured an actual portrait. Anyone can stick a face in front of the screen and go, wow, fiber optic. But I feel this image, you know. Now, obviously, people are going to be able to go and have a look at the tutorial of how you've created this. But talk me through the process. What are the, what are the basic steps? of creating a, a, an incredible image like this? I, I share one learning first. I had a discussion with Dean Fidelman, uh, an American photographer. He's specialized in news and landscape. Yeah. And that's when I had my epiphany because today I know much better why this photo were, went so well. Yeah. It's because I have a great relationship with a person. It's one of my best friends. Yeah. And uh, he's actually sitting on my couch and I have a bag. Uh, drop behind him a black one and it's super simple yeah. uh, yet I had and this came later a lot of moments when I used the fiber brush and touch their face and then I look at the result and then there's no face you literally could not recognize the person yeah and when they did, had the discussion with Dean was the relation to the model was established way before Later on, I had several occasions when I had to establish that relationship with the model first. Yeah. It may sound kind of weird and spiritual. I'm not exactly from, uh, from that end, but then I realized, okay, it's actually within me as well. So the first step would be establish a relationship to the model. And then we can get all technical because you were saying I'm German. Yeah. That's what, <laughs> what people tell me. You're way too technical. And I'm like, yeah, and so now I'm in that moment to in the transition of realizing also what it means to establish a relationship to the model. So step number one. Step number two, you need your uh, fiber brush. <laughs> yeah. That's it. That's it. And and you can see like this guy is relaxed, man. He is. It's like he's being wrapped in light, you know. And yeah, that, that, that's what it is. So from the technical side, uh, here's the one that I used back then in 2016. I uh, got from Jason Page uh, the, the brush, and you see closely here that's still the same tape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, great. And then the universal adapter. So there's a rubber band here that keeps it in place because it's not sticky anymore. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. But I also use the, I have a lot of these. I also use it from uh, uh, Light Painting Paradise. They're yep. a little bit in the sh different in the shape. So I would tape them or yep. in a different technique. And uh, yeah, that's, that's then the way I would use it. Yeah. So you, something that I'm curious to understand. So you, 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 move the, you move the fiber optic across his face, obviously, right? Can you just yeah. demonstrate on your own face how you move it across? Just, just so we can see, because they, you know, we. It's going to look weird. Yeah, but uh, that's okay. okay uh, so you can have a flashlight. So yep. today I would use sometimes uh, colorful uh, ones. So um, yep. there are different yep. techniques, like when you have this and then you would sweep over it. That's what yep. I also show in the video. Yeah. Um, very often, if I want to create the, the moment that I would actually create uh, kind of like trails, yeah. then I yeah. would first touch the face. 
Yeah, and then then move it. Sweep over the uh, the face, or like in the picture behind me. Funny enough, uh, I would use exactly this. It's a funny move that I kind of liked, so I would just like do this with her. Ah, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's all there is. And then... <laughs> you look like a uh, you look like a Santa's elf. <laughs> well, people would say, let's say Avatar. That's kind of uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So when range. we, you know, we we'll we'll be pointing people straight to the tutorial because it's it's a it's a very comprehensive tutorial. So we don't need to get into it too deeply here. But one of the things I'm curious to know, mate, is how many attempts? So how long was he sitting there, and how many exposures did you take before you were like, yeah, that's the one, one or ten? It's, it's funny. That's one of the first ones. That's like no, one yeah, five that's ten. always the way. That's always the way. Oh, no, 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 no. I, um, when you uh, look at my Instagram feed, uh, I, it, I did one shooting with him only. Yeah. And all of these pictures, they're very different. Yeah. Uh, from that shooting, uh, there's this one photo where he kind of breathes. Yes. The dust or whatever. Uh, that looks very scary. So I got a couple of very scary Halloween-ish kind of photos Beautiful. of him, which is much more him. He's this more darker person so imagine that there is someone watching this video who uh is keen to have a go at some fiber optic portraits they've got their fiber optic from either light painting paradise or from light painting brushes the what one bit of it or a couple you know what what bit of advice would you give to someone to help them get into creating these sort of amazing images mate uh, you need to get all that hump of frustration not to get a good result um so i think uh what helps though is to have a few of these ah uh, yeah have two or three yeah have two or three because they do break yeah uh number one number yeah. two you can attach different colors and i use the uh, because sometimes different colors don't uh, work properly with the skin so i have different color tapes yeah. that i put, like a gels and uh, sometimes it's nicer to just like grab one of them laying on the table. Yes. And you know, we are, we are in this uh, age of instant gratification. Yeah. <laughs> so rather spend a little bit more money on uh, yep. a few of those brushes because then you can actually grab just a different color very quickly. You I would all Okay, everyone, we're back at the schools. Like now, we, um, you won't have seen this, but it's been two weeks since we had that little glitch. We were, we were that right. That gone. Yeah. <laughs> we were right through the recording and we lost connection and, I, and it didn't record. So we're back. Um, so, mate, we were, we were touching on, uh, you were giving us some amazing tips around the portraiture. And I think our recording stopped and you were like this with the scanner so um give us give us give us a bit talk to us a bit more about the scanner like the benefits and bits and pieces okay uh two weeks ago uh we did this and today i have three more pieces on the table oh, awesome if we want if we, if we want to give advice i yeah. uh, i thought like okay we can can add a little more uh, to it um totally. increase the level of complexity totally okay. let's go um so I, how did I start? Uh, like today I use the, the like I said, the, the, the brushes from anything that I can grab. So yeah. I would use the brush and then sometimes I would turn it on and then I would apply the light very yeah. peculiarly on different areas. Yeah. So you see this in, the, in, the, in, in some photos, I would just like go and then just like highlight the, the, the neck. So this would be my scanner. Also the beauty here is yeah. you can actually shape a scanner the way you want yeah so in some cases this would be the very precise in one photo i used it as the tears coming yeah. down uh, and then you just like place it exactly the way you want in any shape you like so yeah. that's one of my tips and then the next step is very simple so you have that connector yeah and that again is the next step of your scanner a little yeah. less sophisticated but again see here i, I have the scanner yeah you just squeeze it. Yeah, brilliant. And that's also useful for outside. If you in yeah. uh, like an um, old factory place, you can also scan the ground. And if you yeah. squeeze it, then you get a nice cheap scanner. 
Uh, it's a great, it took go- me, it took me a long time to figure that out. The, I was always <laughs> trying to, I was always trying to snoot my light to get trees and stuff. And then it was, duh. Oh, uh, I do have a very big cardboard and then you can just like put the cardboard on top. Yeah. Much simpler. Yeah. Um, and then the next level was from the gas station. There's this uh, kind of torch that you can turn around. I just put some cardboard yes. box around it. Yes, it's a work um, light. I think I think in some places they call that a work light. Like yeah, work light for yeah. a grass or something. And then it has this magnet, whatever. Nice. And I always like look at this is super ugly, but uh, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Ugly doesn't so, matter. So Sven Gerhard, of course, much more sophisticated. <laughs> he puts the button. <laughs> he puts the button right into it, right? Yeah. And I'm like, fuck that! I put it outside. Yeah, so yeah, can, yeah. I can do ah, this. another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They work, and you can pick them up really well priced. Yes, they yeah. cost like 20 bucks or less. Yeah. And yeah. the beauty with this one is that I can be far away from the model. If yeah. I can even have white clothes on almost, yeah. <laughs> because sometimes I would appear in the picture. So that's why totally. the distance. I have some photos where I sneak in the back. And then <laughs> I like, because I, I, I shed light on me. But, but this way I'm far away and then I can scan my face nicely. It's an interesting yeah. something something I found recently because I, I haven't done a lot of that sort of scannery type portraiture until until quite recently. One of the things I learned is that the inverse square law really applies to this stuff. So if if you're so that that little scanner that you had there just has one power maybe, and if you no, want no, it to be brighter, amazing. if you want it to be brighter, you come closer. And then if it's oh cool, look at that, man, that's a very fancy pan scanner. But if you it's, want it to be a bit dimmer. You can just move away and that's a quick way to do that oh look at that that's a nice one it is nice yeah and uh even better so you see this little box yeah that's sven gerard giving me a favor it's yeah, the exact same thing put in the small box and it yeah. still has that wheel of fortune i don't know <laughs> uh, that's nice and then i can do that and so yeah, with a little punch it button yeah. um yeah, yeah the uh, but the thing is that, uh, so you're right with uh, uh, probably Tom Hill, <laughs> the <laughs> physicist. So, or Dan is the same thing. So if you're far yeah. away, yeah, uh, you you get more light. If you closer, you get more texture. Yes. So you have to think about those two things. Yeah. So depending on the angle of attack, you yep. create the shadows differently. So this is not only uh, applying less light but you can have it a little more diffuse and then it yes. gets a little more tricky. Ooh. Again, a great, great, great friends to have. So Sven comes around and says, I have those filters for you. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. Sven is, uh, Sven is very, uh, it's such a good friend. We know us so long now and yeah. sometimes I ask him like, uh, how do you do this and this? I'm like, oh yeah, here. <laughs> Solution. I'm looking forward to it. We're, we're, um, we're probably hooking up this weekend to have a chat. But. Uh, uh, send him my greetings with those interruptions because really Sven has become uh, yeah, one of my greatest light painting yeah. friends out there. Uh, you know, we talked about Dan, but uh, Sven really enabled me here around. So he would say like, oh, we're going out. You want to join? And uh, yeah. there's no pressure. There's no competition. There's no yeah. bullshit. We, we yeah. talked about... Yep. We should do Gossip Corner, but uh, with Sven, it's very simple. <laughs> so then, <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, you can say, say something about people, what, how much you like people. Uh, yeah, they're humans. and yeah. um, That's it. He, he, well, you know the thing, mate, like we'll, we'll, we'll kind of wrap it now. And I, and I, as I always do, I think, and, and it's interesting you mentioned Sven. Um, you know, I'm going to make sure that people get to see your work and 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 the interesting thing and i think i think we touched on this two weeks ago at the beginning but <laughs> you're 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 one of the you're one of these light painters in the community that that is it's so broad the spectrum of what you what you've dealt you know delved into but one of the things and i think this is that whole german thing is that it all ends up being quite precise and accurate and nice and crisp and whether it's your beautiful fiber optic portraits or or the more clinical sort of stuff but what i love about you and your light painting and i think where there's that connection between us is that 
you go outside. Like I love, I, I think it's brave. Any light painter that gets their butt outside and, and has a crack at being out. Uh, there's something, there's something cool about that. And I love it. And um, I also, while I've got you, uh, I just want to say a massive thank you. And I'm sure everyone in the light painting community for the incredible effort that you guys have put into lightpainters.com. Uh, we'll be linking to that. It is such a beautiful resource for the community. Uh, it's a place, again, I can't remember if we talked about it, so I'll cover it. It is lightpainters.com is this beautiful resource, not only where you can share images. It's like a little, it's like a little no bullshit Facebook. But for me, I think we're the real, and once we all start traveling again, mate, <laughs> it's a place to, to connect with other light painters. So if you're heading off to the US or Europe, or you're coming down to Australia, really quickly and easily, you can find where we are and make contact. And I reckon, like, I, 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 I was about to say, I know the amount of effort, but I don't think I do. The amount of energy <laughs> and effort that goes into putting something like that together. And, and I appreciate it. And I know everyone else appreciates it. The time and energy that you and Sven uh, put into um, and Sven's wife, yeah, Light Up Berlin, and and your partner, and and you know, being able to come over all the way from Australia and and be part of such an absolutely gorgeous event. I was looking at some footage the other day, and I'll show some now. It was just, it was like being in light painting paradise. It was just gorgeous, mate. I had such a great time, and and I and felt we, right now we're discussing the next one, maybe for next year, but it's yeah. a nightmare. All the regulations. Yep. More than thirty-five people. Blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah, more yeah, than yeah, yeah. two hundred. Uh, it's a nightmare. I, we don't see it coming yet. No. Uh, we have huge trouble to to look at the next one. It's difficult but we'll keep you updated if oh, anything well, it, i'm any i know mate 2021 i'm just going to be itching to get my butt to europe and to the us and and i'm i'm going to make it happen but anyway i will keep moving we'll move on to the next one gonna you are a you are a gentleman and you are such a superb light painter and such a such a gorgeous part of the community thank you for well, sharing thank you. thank you for sharing uh, a bit of behind the scenes on this wonderful photograph and everyone uh, thank you so much for joining us again at the School of Light. Head down the Guna rabbit hole. It is a it is a fluffy, gorgeous place to be. Thank you yes, so much. Thank you very much. Peace. Thank you, guys. I hope you enjoyed this visit to the School of Light. Don't forget to subscribe to the cricket. channel. That's I'll good. be adding videos all the time. Head over to the Light Painting Tool Shop at the website. There's a huge array of tools I've made there for you to take on your light painting journey. Peace.